Senator Hughes. Thank you, Mr President. My question is to the Minister for Women, Senator Payne. Will the Minister update the Senate on the steps the Liberal and Nationals government has taken this year in relation to supporting Australian women and focusing on their safety? The Minister for Women, Senator Payne. Thank you very much, Mr President, and I thank Senator Hughes for her question. Yesterday's report on Commonwealth parliamentary workplaces by the Sex Discrimination Commissioner has underscored the task that is ahead of us, both here and nationally, a task to which we as a government are very strongly committed. Too many Australians, particularly women, do continue to face harassment, violence and inequality across the country. However, we have made progress in important areas. Addressing inequality is fundamental, and that is why the Morrison government is supporting women's leadership and strengthening women's options by helping to enhance economic security. We have established a cabinet task force dedicated to women's safety and economic security, including ministers with specific responsibility in those areas. And I acknowledge Senator Rustin, Senator Hume and Senator Stoker and their roles. Our women's budget statement is investing a record $1.1 billion in women's safety. Our measures include the Escaping Violence Payment, the Safe Places Program with 780 additional emergency accommodation places for women and children, the Stop It at the Start campaign about creating more respectful attitudes. We have funded or fully implemented most of the recommendations of the Respect at Work report with further work underway. And we are finalising the next national plan to end violence against women and their children following a valuable and important national summit. We have also funded national partnerships with states and territories for frontline services during COVID-19. Just as within parliament we must work across parties in addressing these issues, nationally we must work between governments, with the private sector, community and advocacy groups and frontline organisations. Mr President, this is a task for all Australians. Senator Hughes, a Thank you, Mr. supplementary President. question. Can the minister outline the government's investments in women's economic security and workforce participation? Minister. Thank you, Mr President. Through a $1.9 billion investment in the women's budget statement of May of this year and our broader policies, the Morrison government is working to build women's economic security and to grow women's workforce participation. We have increased the childcare subsidy to make childcare more affordable. Our Boosting Female Founders program has awarded nearly $12 million to 51 women-owned and led start-ups. Our Career Revive program is supporting 60 additional employers to attract or retain women after they take a career break, and the Family Home Guarantee is supporting single parents to buy a home. We know the COVID pandemic has had a particular impact on women's employment, but our economic recovery plan has helped create jobs rebuild our economy and provide the conditions to enhance women's economic security. We will continue to focus on these tasks as we build the recovery. Senator Hughes, a Thank second you, supplementary President. question. Can the minister also outline to the Senate the government's support for women's leadership and equality? Minister. You, Mr President, this government is strongly committed to supporting more women into leadership positions. We've expanded the successful Women's Leadership and Development Program and funded over 70 projects across Australia in both urban and regional areas that support around 50,000 women and girls into employment and leadership opportunities. Our Academy for Enterprising Girls, for example, is developing young women's skills in entrepreneurship, now supporting over 6,300 students. We're also leading by example. We are less than half a percent away from our goal of having 50 per cent of women holding government board positions. We set that target and we will meet it. Under the Morrison government, the gender pay gap has narrowed to its lowest level on record at 13.4 per cent, but I acknowledge and recognise that the impact of COVID-19 and consecutive lockdowns has impacted that figure. Continuing to narrow the gap and enhance women's leadership and equality remain our priorities. <laughs> 